Hi, I'm Mike, and I've got a confession to make. You see, I'm a guitarist, but recently I've been playing virtual guitars, and I quite liked it. In fact, sometimes I play lots and lots of chords with just one finger. Shame on you. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. So I was recently made aware that UJAM had brought out a new virtual guitar instrument called Carbon. So I had a listen and realised it's very different to any virtual guitar instrument I've had on the channel before, so I thought I'd show you guys. And then I realised I really hadn't covered any of the UJAM virtual guitar instruments at all, so I decided to put them all in this video, finishing off with Carbon. I've also put them all together in one song which is presently unknown so perhaps you guys can have a listen and name that song for me in the comments down below. I'll also be giving my opinions on the pros and cons of these virtual instruments. Now if you do like this kind of content, all about home recording, DAWs, gear reviews, plug-in reviews, that kind of thing, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my other videos. Now let's get stuck into some carbon. So I'm going to start off with what I think is the lightest of all of these plugins and that is called Silk. Now I'm going to spend a little bit longer on this plugin than I will the others and that is because thankfully there's some consistency in design. So once you kind of learn how one of these plugins operates it really sets you up to be able to quickly understand the other plugins. Now this plugin is a nylon string guitar which is mostly being arpeggiated on chords. There's a couple of strums here and there but it's mostly arpeggiated patterns for you to choose from and there's lots of them but we'll get into that later. Let's start off by hearing just how it sounds on a basic straightforward C major triad chord and I'm going to play that and you're going to see it appear uh, in the chord section on the sort of middle top of the actual plugin interface. So let's have a listen to see how it sounds. Okay, so you can hear a very, very rich sounding nylon string guitar. They're right out of the box. It just sounds kind of nice and useful right away. Now, how can we get variations on our chords? Well, you can just play triads and you can, I'm gonna play now and play say a major chord to a suspended fourth, suspended second. I'll give you a demonstration of also a major seventh and a seventh chord. So let's have a listen to that. the basic idea. So you can play in that kind of traditional way um, just with the right hand playing triad chords and it does a really really good job of picking up which chords you're going for. Now if you want to get things to be really really simple then what you can actually do up here is go to uh, select a key. So I'll select say the key of G and then I can actually play the chords with just one finger and it's going to make sure that those chords remain in the key of G. So if I just play a one finger G note it's going to play a G major chord. Now if I was to play an A note it's going to play an A minor because of course that keeps it in the key of G. We'll go to B, B minor and of course C would be C major if we're in the key of G. Let's go to D and so on and so forth and E of course would be you know kids minor of course. We could play in that octave or down here. So you do get uh, sort of two to three octaves on the different chords you can play. Now I generally prefer to play the chords manually so I can get those sort of variations which are not in the actual key but if you're playing a fairly simple piece of music then you could just go ahead and use those one finger chords. Now the other thing that's really common in this style of music is to put a different note in the bass other than the root note. So by default on a G on a C chord like this, that uh, note at the bottom is a C note. But let's say I'm going from uh, C major up to an F and I want to do a leading note in the bass of E before I go to the F. Let's have a listen and see how we do that. I'm going to play the, the varying bass note with my uh, left hand. I'll try again. And you 
can see the idea there. So that's a very, very nice touch. You can get those sort of walking bass lines and um, those sort of variations in bass that are really important to these styles of music. Now, talking about styles of music, this is where we move on to the style phrases. We're just using one pattern there. And that pattern is in this style that I've selected here, which is called Vivid Picking. Now, if I click on this style menu, you'll see on your screen lots and lots of different styles. Now, I can't actually fit all of them on in this screen capture. There's around about 50 to 60 different styles. Now, within those styles, and I'll stay with Vivid Picking for now, we also have a number of different style phrases, something like 10 to 12 different style phrases. So the one we've been playing here was played by holding down um, this E flat note here um, but we can change the style down here on with our left hand there so I'm just going to play the style we had and then I'm going to move to some others so you can hear the variation <laughs> So you can really get lots of variation within the style you've selected and I would suggest you know to move them around between different chords. So I'd start off say with my C there, perhaps when I go to an F I'll go to a different pattern. and so on and so forth. So you can start to create some much more sort of organic sounding and natural sounding music if you change around those style phrases a little bit. Now all the way onto the left hand side at the top of the interface we see some other key switches and these are co for common phrases. Now these do not change when you change the style. They, these are consistent throughout. So let's uh, pick one here, I'll go for this. Very, very straightforward pattern as you can hear. Another one here. So very, very usable uh, basic patterns there and I think there's some even some strums as well. Really, really good for sort of ending a section or ending a whole piece. This one here, more of a backwards kind of a strum. That one there. So some very, very useful phrases, and that's how you make up the basics of the sort of composing part of this. Now, if we look right over on the right hand side, there are a few more controls. We can half the speed or double the speed of the pattern. So let's double it. Oops, but actually select a decent pattern for that. Uh, this is a double speed. Kind of ridiculous, but it depends what uh, time signature in as to whether that's useful. Half speed could be useful. So you can change some things down there. And then you've also got some other uh, controls there to change the kind of feel of it. I find swing most useful um, if you've got a kind of piece which has um, a kind of a swing to it. So let's have a listen here. As opposed to when it's straight. Hopefully you can hear the difference there. So that's a very useful control and a few others there to control the feel. So that's how you're going to control which chords or patterns are actually being played. Now the bottom section of the interface down here is where you actually change the sound of the guitar. So for example, we have this position control here where we can change, I think it's the mic position from the neck to the bridge. So that would go from a very soft sound to a harder sound. Have a listen to that. then some sort of bigger changes if you actually change the whole character. Let's, we're on rich at the moment, let's change it to original. Okay, and let's go for sheen, that's a very, very sort of toppy one. Okay, so you can really change the sound enormously there by using that character. You've also got some options there to do things like actually uh, select different mics, one of two mics, and then kind of mix them up in different ways. We also have the option to turn fret noise off and on. I'll just leave it on. And then there's doubling. Now, this is a very interesting one because doubling is something we often do with guitars to get a wide sound. And a lot of the times with these presets, the doubling is switched on by default. So you get a very, very produced sound. Like, like the one we've been listening to. 
there's also some delay on there. But what if I wanted to get a really raw sound and not a very produced sound? I would switch the doubling off, for example. I could switch the delay off, would be a good move, and perhaps go to one microphone. Let's have a listen to this guitar now. So if you're listening through headphones or you've got speakers, that's going to sound very, very different to you. If you're listening through the speaker on your phone, perhaps it won't sound so different. But sometimes you do want that very raw sounding guitar and not a very produced sounding guitar. So that could be quite useful. So that is Silk, an arpeggiated nylon string guitar. And we're going to be moving on to another light sounding guitar, but this time it's going to be steel string and it's going to be strumming. So let's move on to Amber. So if you watch the whole of the last section, then you will already understand most of the user interface of Amber because it's quite similar in approach to Silk. So let's explore what's different about it. Well, first of all, it's quite a different sound. This is a steel strung guitar and we're using strumming patterns rather than picking patterns. So again, I'm going to play a C major chord with a couple of variations so you can get a basic idea of the sound. Change up to an F and a G. Okay, did you hear that kind of gap in there as I changed from the F to the G? You can overcome that um, on all of these instruments by switching on latch, and that ensures that the pattern keeps going until you completely change to the next chord. So I'll go C again. And my fingers are now off of the keyboard, it's still playing. Play an F now and a G. So that's a really handy way to avoid getting those sort of gaps in between your chords. Now, of course, we have the different style phrases, which we'll move on to in a minute, and lots and lots of common phrases here. What we don't have on this plugin is the variations in the bass notes, which we had on Silk. So that's probably not quite so important for this style of guitar. So they've omitted that. In the bottom section, we've got a similar approach again. We can change to different sounds. So um, if I play, I'll play a different chord, let's go for A minor. And we can change the sound by changing the position here. A full sound. A much thinner sound. Let's give ourselves a different chord. Let's have a listen to the tone controls. That's really, really warm to a very crisp sound. variation in between. So it's really good in terms of giving you those different sounds. You can change uh, the sound by changing between the mic and the pickup or mixing the two. You could add shimmer, which adds a really nice little sparkly top end to the sound. Um, you can also add fret noise. It's already on there. And again, we have doubling switched on there like we did for Silk to begin with. So we get that really wide sound. If we wanted to get a really basic sound, we'd switch doubling off again. And I'll turn the delay off as well. And let's have a listen to just with a microphone and have a listen to that. Okay, so you can hear that kind of very, very basic sound there. And let's have a look at some of the variations we get in phrases. And I'm on the reggae setting here. I'm just gonna uh, select a style phrase there. I really don't know what it's gonna be. Let's have a listen. So you can hear it gets all those nice little chops and things in there as well, which is a nice touch because um, those things are really hard to kind of replicate if you try and manually um, play chords with different virtual instruments. So um, I think Amber's a really nice way to get some rhythm guitar into your songs in a really easy, straightforward way. So hopefully you can see a bit of a pattern emerging here because the UI for Sparkle is very similar indeed to Amber, the last plugin we looked at. Again, at the top, we have the place where we can select our style and we can play our different chords and we can choose a different key like we could with the other plugins and play very simple one finger chords, etc., etc. And again, down on the bottom half is where we change the sort of sonic properties of the sound of the actual guitar. So I'm not gonna go through the different patterns again and how you 
you select them. Instead, I've pre-programmed a little pattern in my DAW here, and I'm going to play around with the controls at the bottom so you can hear how we can change the actual sound of the guitar. Now, it's a fairly clean sounding guitar. It doesn't get that heavy. If you want to hear a much rockier guitar, then stick around for the next plugin, which is iron um, but having said that we can add a little bit of grit and drive to it so have a listen to sparkle go to a really clean sound. And we can drop the D to get much deeper bass notes. And we can even add some doubling like we did with the other guitars. And a really suitable effect is chorus, of course. So a word of warning before we get into this next plugin. If you've been listening fairly loud up until now, then I recommend you just be careful of your ears because things are about to get a whole lot grittier and louder for this next plugin, which is called Iron. This is very much a heavy rock guitar, and I'm going to start off by playing an A power chord with it so you can hear just how it sounds. Get ready. Here we go. Yeah, makes you want to wear a black T-shirt, huh? Anyway, I'm not going to go through this plugin in detail because, again, the functionality of it is very similar to the other plugins. But I have prepared a little chord progression with it so you can have a listen. I'm going to play around in the bottom half of the plugin to change the sound of the guitar so you can hear how we can get some very different sounds out of it. It is very rocky. You can make it a whole lot lighter for some lighter rock sounds. But we'll be starting off with a fairly heavy sound. Let's have a listen. Just one little tip when you're using this kind of an instrument, you'll notice that I did play some uh, what I call power chords at the beginning, which is just the root and the fifth. So have a listen. Now you'll notice that things get a little bit strange if we start to add in some thirds. Let's have the uh, A, but I'll play an A minor with that A minor third in there start to get a little bit muddy and that can actually happen on an actual guitar so sometimes we emit the thirds and just keep to the root and the fifth to keep uh, what you would call a power chord even when you add the major third it's a little bit better but still a little gritty as opposed to the power chord which is so just a little tip if you're a keyboard player and you want to use rock guitar it's really handy to keep that in mind Okay, so here we are looking at the very latest of this range of plugins from UJAM, and it's called Carbon. And it's by far the most extreme sounding plugin for some very interesting and rather heavy sounds. Not only is it sounding very different, but it's also got a few new features which I'd like to talk about. But first of all, let's have a listen to that extreme sound. I'm just going to play again an A power chord. <laughs> 
so you get an idea there of where we're going with this. Now it doesn't have to sound quite that severe and I'm going to show you how we can tame the sound a little bit as well. But there's some new features in this which I'd like to mention. Not only do we have this player mode where we're playing the chords as we were. <laughs> And we've got all of the different style phrases, etc. But we also have this instrument mode. I'll just flick over to it there. And using this mode, we can use the keyboard in a more traditional way, just as a solo instrument. So you can hear that there. But I'm going to continue to focus on the pattern mode, the player mode, if you like. Now, as well as being able to change the sounds down here, which I'll do in a moment, I want you to pay special attention to this sort of doubling feature we've got down here. Now, the other plugins, of course, had a doubling feature where you can play the instrument in a single mode where everything's just in the center. <laughs> or the doubling mode. So we'll put that on and we get a left and a right instrument. But this goes a bit further. We have a triple mode, which has a center instrument as well. And we also have the quadro mode, which is uh, two doubles on either side. We can also control the distance, the spread and the separation to get some really nice stereo widening effects on the sound. So I'm going to play a pattern which I put in the door. It's fairly simple. I hope it's not too tedious for you. And I'm just going to muck around, first of all, with this severity control over here. So you can have a listen to the difference in sound we can get. So that's a lot lighter as you can hear. Let's change these sounds over here. Okay, now one thing I forgot to mention with these plugins, if you do right click on a control such as this severity control, you can actually learn a, a MIDI CC control or you can assign one there, which means that on your MIDI keyboard, if you've got uh, CC controls on there, you'll be able to control this as you're recording or as you're playing the instrument. Now, if like me, you've got a MIDI foot controller, that can be very, very useful indeed for these plugins. It means you can more organically change the sound while you're actually playing, which is very cool indeed. So check that out in the other plugins as well. Now, as I say, I wanted you to have listened to this stereo widening effects down here. So I'm going to play the pattern again and let's have a listen starting on the single sound and then we'll go all the way up through the quadro and I'll play with the distance and spread, etc. <laughs> So as you can see, you do get quite an amount of control over the stereo spread in this one. I think it's a really, really nice feature indeed. Lots of the other features are the same as the other plugins. Now I thought at first, oh, you can only really use this in sort of heavy rock kind of music. And that's probably sort of fairly true. It's very, very suitable for that. But I think you could creatively use this in all kinds of genres of music, to be honest with you, especially if you're trying to make music for kind of like film or computer games, that sort of thing. I think this could be very interesting for that indeed. So as promised, I've got one piece of music with all of these plugins all together for you guys. I put it together really quickly yesterday afternoon in a couple of hours or so, so it hasn't got a name yet. So give me your name suggestions in the comments down below. I'd love to see what you think there. Now, what do I think of these plugins? Well, on the pro side, I think they're very, very lovely and beautiful looking plugins with a really great workflow. I didn't have to look at the manual at all in the process. They were very straightforward to use indeed. And they're very easy to get going with and get in a song. There's lots and lots of patterns available or styles available. So I really don't think there's anything lacking there. On the con side, I'd like to see them add more options for solo instruments. 
Um, all of them apart from carbon were based around patterns or chord patterns with no real options just to play solo melody lines. So it'd be great if they were to update that in the future. And also one of the biggest things for me is they don't respond to changes in velocity on the keyboard. Now, as we know, when you play harder on a keyboard, not only do things get louder, but the characteristics of the sound changes as well. You can change the characteristics of the sound in all of the UJAM plugins, but it isn't connected to velocity at all. So that's something maybe they could think about. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. What was your favorite of these plugins? Which one of them would you be most inclined to use with your music? And how do you think that they could improve or what did you really love about these plugins? I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, guys. If you did like this video, then hit the like button. If you didn't like this video, then hit the dislike button twice. And if you like this kind of content, then please do subscribe and ring the bell on YouTube so that you get notified about my future videos. Now let's have a listen to this one piece of music with all five plugins in.